Okay. Okay, great. Um, calling to order the Wednesday, July 13th, 2022, meeting of the Gig Harbor Arts Commission. First item of business is our roll call. Um, I will guess I will call your name because we're not in person. I'll just call your names as I see you and um, we'll be on our way. So Charlie Glock Jackson Chair, uh, Robin. Robin Offney, Vice Chair, here. D Dan. Dan Bozik, here. Lynn. Lynn Stevenson, Commissioner, thank you. Sonia. Sonia Johnson, here. And Colette Smith. Your audio's off, Colette. The, the, the phrase of the- Here you go. <laughs> thank the you. The phrase of the decade is, you're on mute. <laughs> Thanks, Colette. And <laughs> Jennifer. Jennifer Beard, Commissioner. Uh, did I get everybody? And so. oh, okay, and uh, Tiffany. Yes, hello, Tiffany Alleman, Assistant City Clerk. Great. Um, so uh, the next order of business is to approve the minutes of the June 8th meeting. And um, I assume everyone has read them. Are there any corrections or, or additions? Tiffany, were the minutes included in our packet? They should have been. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were. Okay, I must be looking at an old packet. Oh, I'm just looking at the agenda. I'm not looking at the packet. Sorry. Um, are any corrections or additions to the minutes of the June 8th meeting? Hearing or seeing none. May um, I have a motion to approve, please? Charlie. Yes. Um, sorry to interrupt, but there's just a small uh, typographical error under discussion items. That should be September 14th Arts Commission meeting. There's an R missing in the word arts. Okay. And uh, any other corrections or additions? Good catch, Colette. Okay, then now, could I have a motion to approve as amended or as revised? A motion to approve the minutes. Okay. And a second by Dan. Um, all in favor, I guess let's just raise our hands or say aye. Looks like aye. we have uh, unanimity. Um, everybody's, everybody's in favor, okay. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of the June 8th meeting passes seven zip. Um, discussion items on our list for today are, um, is Laura with us, Tiffany? No, I don't see that she is here. I'm, I apologize. I not sure what happened there. Okay. Um, then we will move on to the arts commission work plan. Let's, if, if no one minds, can we go to Harbor Arbor Art next? Cause I think the work plan is going to take up um, a lot of discussion and I, my preference would be to be able to have plenty of time allotted to that. So if there are no objections, um, the chair moves item number three to item number two on our discussion items. So Lynn, do you wanna talk about Harbor Arbor Art? Yeah, okay, very exciting. We got one application. Um, hey, one, that's great. Better, it's better than zero. So, uh, and it's from Jeff Samodowski. I hope um, you guys have all read his uh, application. Uh, I don't know how much there is to discuss other than, you know, he didn't give us sketches, but hopefully we all know his work. And um, he wrote up some potential ideas, given the, the size of these stumps and they're smaller. And he hasn't seen them in person yet. Um, and maybe he'll be inspired, you know, when he sees them for something more specific. But we can talk about some of the ideas that he mentioned. 
which are, he could do something like an abstract piece. He said a ball or, uh, you know, different sh abstract shapes, um, like blocks that are stacked, a seashell, a giant snail, an octopus tentacle, a, a bear butt, like a bear, the butt backside and the legs of a bear sticking out of the stump kind of thing or a bear head and paws peeking out from the stump. So we have two, you know, we have two locations this year. So two different stumps. Um, and, you know, I don't like to give an artist too much direction. I think, well, Jeff is used to people hiring him, commissioning and saying, I want this kind of general or even specific thing. Um, so we can discuss if you guys have any specific thoughts about what it should be. I, I guess I can say Jeff did our site last year and that was the mama bear with the baby bear. Um, and so we have, you know, we have a couple bears in our collection. So I would be inclined, even though I love this, the, the bear idea, I might be inclined to say, well, let's maybe not do a bear on these sites or, or maybe one of them could be. So what do you think? I, you know, if he if he shows up and he says, "Oh, I just see a bear. I think this has to be a bear." Like I'm not, I don't want to stand in his way, but. Um, About a fisher. A fisher. There's an what's idea. A, what's a fisher? Is that a bird? It's, it's a, like a weasel. A rare weasel. Oh. <laughs> Let's throw a challenge at him. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Oh, Robin, you're you're on mute. I, know. I, I thought you meant maybe like a fish. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think you're right. Give him give him artistic license to take a look at it. But you know, if he did if he did an abstract and and did the other one in a snail or octopus, I, you know, I think that sounds good. Sounds like it'd be a little different. One one site to give you the context of the site. One site is um, right just near um, the Harbor Arbor Art location number two, which is on um, right on Grandview, on the edge of Grandview Forest Park at Stanage Avenue. And site number two is a collection of five snags, and there we have, um, that's where we have, the, there's a woodpecker, and then there's different faces on a couple of the snags and then a couple of snags have little uh, like fairy houses. So in that context, you know, maybe there's something that would sort of fit with that. Um, maybe it could be something more abstract right there because we have personalities over there. But um, uh, I don't know. I'm not even a bear could go there because there's not a bear <laughs> in that collection. But um, yeah. I, I guess what we should do is maybe just get, have a dialogue about it, see if anybody has any strong ideas one way or another, um, tell, I can tell Jeff where we're, the direction we're leaning in, and then um, also give him some freedom to see how he feels about it. Lynn, uh, you mentioned that um, he hasn't seen the sites yet. Right. So perhaps he could just visit them and come back with his own impressions and then we have more to talk about uh, because if he really like you say might feel very strongly about well a little bare face would look perfect here then mm -hmm. then we don't want to, that you know that allows him his artistic to create right creativity yeah yeah um and the the, the second location is um there's nothing else around you know, there's no other um art around it um, and personally, I, I like the idea of something that has a personality to it, like a snake, whether it's a snail or something with a kind of a character, um, mm -hmm. the way you engage with a character in an environment like that, like the bears, um, it, it's a different kind of feeling than if you just came upon a, a, a seashell carving or something like that. Um, that's just my personal kind of feeling about it, but... Um, yeah, I agree. If he feels some inspiration in the moment, then I'd like him to be free to explore that. 
Yeah, I mean, I would second that to have them go visit the site because I think they're all great ideas. I like the guidance of um, what you were saying about the five other snags and maybe that should be more creature oriented. So I would give him that guidance, you know, and say like maybe the bear or the, the I don't know. Um, snail. Snail, sure. thank you. Um, but <laughs> on, the other, on the other one, um, you know, he might be inspired and I would like to hear what, he's, what he said. So, I mean, I give him some guidance because obviously he put some thought into it, but say, you know, here's where we're leaning and um, what would you suggest for this site and then the other, and mm -hmm. you can go from there. Yeah, okay. Um, I did write to him a few days ago to say, to ask when he thought, because he has until December, you know, to do this, just to try to get a sense of when he thought it might fit in his schedule, and I haven't heard back. So um, uh, it doesn't really matter to us, and he'll work that out with the city, um, but when I, when we hear, you know, I'll, if he tells me, I'll let you guys know. Or, um, yeah, good. Yeah. I don't know if it'll be sooner or later this year. I know he's busy. So very excited to have him um, participating with us. No kidding. I just have a feeling whatever it is, it'll be just super. Hey. Um, oh, sorry, my, my dogs are nuts. Hi, Gus. <laughs> is, it, is it Gus? Oh, I adopted another dog recently, too. That's Gus and Dory. Oh, Dory's Dora. wearing a diaper. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, okay. She was, she apparently wasn't fixed and she's in heat. So. <laughs> <laughs> what fun. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh yeah, it's fun. Surprise. <laughs> yeah, not, not a good surprise. Uh, hey, stop it. Um, well, it, uh, so is every, we're, I think we're in agreement that um, we, accept Jeff's proposal, um, but that we want a little bit more of an idea of uh, once he visits the site, uh, what his um, uh, solution might be, and then we'll go from there. Is, does this sound? Uh, so if, well, I don't want it to seem as if he needs to wait for our further approval. Like if he can go out next week, you know, if he's like, um, uh, I know he needs that flexibility to be able to say, oh, I've got a couple days I could do this in Gig Harbor. He he doesn't live in Gig Harbor anymore. Um, right, yeah. He's in McCleary. I think it's about an hour away. Um, so is it okay with everyone that um, if we just, I'll give him some feedback or, Tiffany, do you have to give him that feedback or? Is it okay if I contact him? Yeah. I don't think it needs to be me. Okay, I'll talk to him and um, give him our input and um, ask him if he can go visit. Because he's an hour away, he may not make a trip just to, oh, he might, he, if, if he's up this way, he might stop by and check out, inspect the viability of those snags too and um, see if he's inspired. So if it's okay, I'll just let him know and say, uh, have at it when you can. Let just keep us posted. And um, if he is, if he does have any kind of inspiration to share with us before that, I'll ask him to just let us know. Great. Yeah, that yeah. sounds good. But do we have to give any sort of a approval or vote on that um, that we look at him, or are we just good? What, what I would recommend is, um, so we can move forward with a contract that he'll need to sign to be able to do the work. Um, and then if his, once he gets to the site and looks at it, if he needs to vary from what he's proposed or like he did last year, he just did a, a stump that he was going to carve was completely brought it through. So we transitioned to the log. Um, I think what we will do um, internally as staff, we can go ahead and approve that amendment to the contract. But I think if you guys are all willing, you can just um, de delegate to Lynn to be your contact for the Arts Commission. So if there's uh, some kind of artistic deviation that needs to happen, we can just reach out to Lynn and let her know. And then she can, on behalf of the commission, you know, let us know if it's appropriate or not. But 
I don't know how how far. I'm not anticipating that he'll probably get too far off of his proposal. Good guidance, thank you. Um, if everyone's okay with that. Do we need uh, Josh or Tiffany? Do we need a motion to approve Jeff as the artist? Um, let's. I would say go ahead and do. Yeah, let's do a motion just to recommend that the city enters into the agreement with him as the artist, and then we have an official right. tally on the record. And yeah. Right. Okay. Um, in that case, may I have um, a, a similar motion? Okay. Uh, yeah, I propose that we accept the uh, Harbor Arbor Art application from Jeff Samodowski. And I'll second. second the motion. Sonia, seconded. Um, any discussion? Any further discussion? Uh, then all in favor, uh, raise your hand. And we have unanimous approval. Excellent. Good work, Lynn. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Um, OK, moving along then, work plan. Um, Robin, were you going to take a crack at that? There should have been a, uh, a general um, PDF that was sent with the meeting announcement or posted on the site. And um, yeah, and then I I have it up um, on my screen, but Tiffany, I don't know if it's just easier for you to put it up, and if you can edit or take no, we can then you can take some notes as we go. But either way, let me know what you'd like to do. Um, Okay, so what um, what I did was I took our goals that we had originally written for uh, our, our uh, element and um, put them in a document for you all to review because in a lot of these uh, in a lot of these goals we had there were ideas about what we wanted to do and um, for our you know, as part of the creative endeavor and um, and how we wanted to go about it. Now, of course, we can't do these all in one year. Um, and I think, you know, it's really more the bullet points um, that, um, that we should look at. But um, what I wanted to do was first hope everybody had a chance to look at it and then say, um, and then go through and make a suggestion or two and prompt some discussion for each of the goals. Cause I think it would be nice to have a work plan that at least spoke to an addition, one of the goals in each of, um, in each of our five goals. That said, like with goal one, the first bullet point, of course, we, we do that, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I think that we also might wanna look at, do we wanna do another survey? Bullet point number four, collect data that evaluates cultural and economic impact of the arts. I think it might be interesting to work with the city to do a survey because of um, the two years of COVID. I think you've definitely seen a lot of arts um, uh, interest even feel like they were missing the arts or people looking for ways to be able to engage in the arts remotely. Um, I think there's a lot to be uh, looked at there and it might be interesting to do a survey. So I'm giving you this as an, an example. So, or what we could do instead of maybe a survey is this solicit regular feedback from the community through interviews with citizens. We could do an open an open meeting, or we could do something where we invite um, key people in the community and get feedback on the direction that they where they think the arts should be going. So, for you know, for instance, um, Jennifer, we could partner with the the 
potentially partner with the History Museum on this, uh, ask, you know, see if you guys could host it. You would have some people you would want to be in, invited, invite for sure. We would have people that we would want to engage in that and to begin to kind of have, um, be able to lay out more of a community plan. Um, so those are two ideas for goal one. Um, so I'm going to pause here and see if anybody has any questions about moving forward in this direction, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'm pausing. Okay. <laughs> Is this a work plan that we're creating for next year or for the remainder of this year? I think, you know, that's a great question, Jennifer. And I think what, what I'd like to look at it is something that we will look from maybe September to September or September to December. And the main reason is that if we do want to do something where we want to apply for um, the lodging tax application, which I believe is closing in end of August, I think. End of August, right. So um, if there's something that we want to support that we could also apply, I'd like to be able to, I think we should be able to do that. So any comments, thoughts, questions um, before we move forward with some ideas? Uh, I, I don't, I, uh, I just had one um, note at the on the top bullet where you mentioned that we're um, advocates to the mayor and council. Is that, I didn't know if that was the right word. I know we're advisors. I don't know how picky we want to get about the verbiage, but um, you know what I mean? Are we advocates advocates to the mayor and council? Well, we're advocates for the arts. Advocates for the arts, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that probably just needs to be reworded. It's... Um, well, I'm not so... This is... As, um, uh, yeah, I mean, this was something that was incorporated with different language into the uh -huh. element, and this is, you know, we can certainly change it, but... We don't, we did vote upon this as, so I don't, do we have to, if we adjust that, Josh, do we have to put it, this whole thing through another vote? Okay. This is, well, this is the comp plan element, right? Yeah. Yeah, but so it, that's, that's not changing because that's, okay. that's adopted by council already. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I totally get it. Yeah, advocates for the arts. Yeah, I was thinking that we, we are advisors to the mayor. Okay. It's just semantics, I guess. I'm yeah. In. Okay. If you can live, try and live with it. <laughs> as long as it's, I can live it. As long as it's accurate. I was questioning, is that accurate? You know what I mean? But yeah, as long as yeah, it's we'll, agreement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so any other questions? Charlie, uh, any thoughts or Josh before we I'll just clarify the lodging tax advisory grants. The city submits an application for those every year. So if you uh if there's something that you want to do on here that could be funded with lodging tax that would just be something we'd have to let laura know so she can include it on the city's application okay uh, great the yeah. arts commission can't apply it on its own but right. so we, can, it. we can include Got money it. for that if that's yeah awesome. thank and, you and we always apply for quite a wide variety of things with the lodging tax grant so even if it's not identified in our grant when we submit it you know next year or you know down the road we can always just work it into what we've what we've already been awarded money for so uh, that's great that's great yeah. information josh so i think i think there's things like the um like the uh the, the catalog of public art i think that's part of our ltac request every year um, mm -hmm. so, so things like that they're already baked in there and we can we have we have some liberty to move money around to different projects if if we want to well, that's good to know and if anything should come up um, yeah. aside from our conversations today or in the in the next couple yeah. months. So thank you. And just I'll just say one other thing about as far as like the timing of the work plan, uh, the Parks Commission is working on one too right now. And what I've kind of been steering them towards, and this might work for you as well, is um, the city is going to a two-year budget starting this next cycle. So the next budget will be for 2023-2024. Um, so if you want to think of that as something to kind of structure your work plan to coincide with, that may be beneficial because then we can identify in the budget, you know, the specific things that, that might cost money that you guys want to work on. Um, and, and then council can review your work plan at the same time they're reviewing your budget proposal, which probably would help them to kind of see how the two things fit together. So, um, that's great. 
Yeah, one option is you could just adopt this as a 2023 2024 work plan, knowing that, you know, we'll probably be working on it through the end of this year, but then it really kicks in for the next two years. Uh, if, if you want to think of it that way. Okay, so Josh question when is when is budget due? Budget uh, budget the is mayor's proposed budget is supposed to be handed to Council on October 1st, so probably okay. at your September meeting will come with. Um, the Arts Commission's requests for the budget, we'll have to get those solidified. Um, those are, that's not a very, typically a very complicated thing for the Arts Commission. Yeah. It's usually just, you know, a couple of specific public arts projects and then the Endeavors grants. Um, we don't really need to get much more specific than that, but that that's kind of the, the process. So at September, we should really get locked down what, what you guys want to see specifically requested. Okay, so given that information, so I'm going to be a little aggressive here and say, I would like us to have some specific things in that budget. I think it, it um, is a good response to having the cultural element adopted. And I think that there are a few things that we can pick off very quickly that um, if we go through this list, because I want to look like basically we have our act together, um, that we that we were folded in and and we've had these guidelines in place so I'm gonna push for that you guys can all push back but um but but if uh let's see how this goes so um so I'm gonna say for the first goal I want to assign one action aside from what we already do to each goal so goal one I would like to say, I would like to do a community uh, interview with citizens, civic and business leaders, and then share the results with the community. And I think this is an important first step in every other planning that I've ever done with say Bellevue or For Culture, we've always gone out into the community and done interviews. We could say we wanna do two interviews, one with uh, what we consider civic leader and business leaders and influencers and another with citizens. And basically, this would be like a focus and not really a focus group, but just getting people together. Um, you know, we we usually did the size of about 15 to 20 people and, it, you know, and got them together in a group. Um, so that is one idea. Does anybody have any other ideas or any thoughts on that concept? I, I like that idea a lot, Robin. Um, and um, and I appreciate what you said about making um, putting some um, um, some real strength into our um, arts and culture element. We worked so hard and long to get it into the city's uh, code that um, I, I, we've been given this incredible opportunity. And I think it, it's like we've got a blank slate. Let's really fill it with things that are meaningful. Um, that are inspiring creatively and engaging. So I love the idea of getting back in touch with the community and um, getting their input. Then they'll kind of, they'll have sort of a co-ownership of the ideas too. Exactly. And we'll have a better idea of what they want. And I also um, appreciate your thought of um, after having been, invisible for two years because of everything that was canceled because of COVID, um, what, what impact has that had? And, and how can we um, fill up that big two-year hole with creative experiences and inspirations for our community? Yeah, and I, I thank you, Charlie. And I also think it's especially important as some of you may not know, but in my other work that I do, I, I do a lot of, um, trend and lifestyle analysis. Um, and one of the things is local is so elevated in importance now. So um, what we can offer local has great potential. Um, so, so, okay, oh, hold on, excuse me. Um, um, so great, okay, so I will put that under goal number one. So, uh, so if, I could, if I could interject just a minute here, I'm looking and, and this is not to interfere. I just would like us to consider for future 
Um, our point number two, collaborate with the Gig Harbor Tourism and Marketing Department and Pierce County Tourism to increase artistic, historic, and cultural tourism in Gig Harbor. Um, I would, I wonder what others um, think of our somehow coordinating with the with Laura and her group um, on the summer sounds and the movies. And I don't mean to interfere with that, but those are movies and music are creative activities. Those are art. And one of the strong points that we made in our um, in fighting for our arts and culture element was that art is more than statues and parks or pictures on walls. It's music, it's dance, it's theater. Um, it's the spoken word, it's the written word, it's poetry. And um, I, I, I'm not suggesting at all that we interfere with Laura, but that somehow the Arts Commission be identified as, as a co-presenter or something of those music and film events. So I'm just putting that out for future discussion. Okay. All right, that's great. On that one, I, I, I'd recommend, Charlie, that you reach out to Laura on that. Okay. Um, I know the Arts Commission, that, that's a difficult one because I know the process for getting those put together and there is a lot of back and forth on a lot of nimbleness that needs to be done in the decision-making, like, you know, selecting artists and, and, and things like that. So it'd be really difficult to have that come before a commission for review or involvement. Um, but I think just as far as like getting the Arts Commission acknowledged on there, I don't, I think that's something Laura could probably work with you on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, I truly understand. I mean, I've yeah, uh, bands you know, for yeah. festivals and I, yeah. I understand how, how much push me pull you there is, so. Yeah. Josh, what about the idea of using that um, as a forum, maybe the end of the summer here, the last concert to hand out um, a survey to attendees Ooh and have them hand it in afterwards. Um, I mean, unfortunately that does a lot, would be a lot of hand compilation on our part, but I think so, you know, we can make it real like three questions and that would be easy, easy to, uh, to compile. Do you think that would be a possibility? Uh, that's probably something we could do. Uh, I think we have a table mm -hmm. or a booth at the concerts that staff is usually sitting at so we could do something like that there um yeah i um i don't know i don't know how long it would take staff to put something like that together to to get it out there but um well we could put it together yeah yeah and then just if they hand it out and then they could just collect it at the table and we could make it like a few multiple choice and one open and new question real quick <clears throat> Lynn? I, I just wanted to clarify, Charlie, I think you're saying we don't want to be involved in anything doing, dealing with the planning and the execution or anything with those events. We just thought we could use them to maybe, um, uh, what, uh, promote the Arts Commission or remind people that we have an Arts Commission or, or somehow kind of... Um, because they exist, we it, it's an opportunity for us to remind the community of of the <laughs> arts commission and how to. But like, what's the goal? Like, to is there the, the public doesn't really have a way to reach the arts commission directly, do they? Or they don't know about? Or do we want to market that to them? Or, um, but also I'm thinking, Robin, uh, when you have a group of people at a cultural event, the survey is going to be a little skewed to you know. I mean depending on what the questions are. You've got people who have actively participating in, a, in an artistic cultural event and um, it, it's a, a, you know, a segment of the population, but just to keep that in mind, you know what no, I mean? No, that's true. And we're not saying it's a scientific study. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? You're basically well. saying that we want to know what, because they're the people more likely to engage in other arts activities. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, it's information gathering, not, not scientific. Got it. And what kind of questions are you thinking? I'm, I'm curious, really. I, if you I was just to... wondering that too. Like, are, are you looking for suggestions from people or do you want to know how often they, yeah, yeah what, what's the goal of the survey? 
I think the goal of the survey would number one, see what other oper oper art opportunities or cultural opportunities people would want in a city. You know, right. so, so, so we want would, ideas from them. We want ideas. And okay. then the other one, you know, I mean, I, and I'd have to, I refer to, I would refer to some of the American for the Arts surveys. They, that's how we, what we based our uh, initial survey for, for the cultural plan on, um, that I pull one or two from there. Because what that gives us is, it gives us where Gig Harbor falls against, and then we can look at the national response. And that proved very, very powerful when doing the cultural element because it showed that our community was aligned with a national survey. Um, now, it just happened to line up that way last time. It might not line up this way, but if it does, it's, it also um, gives us some information. Because I do know also that the NEA just finished a strategic plan. And also as part of the Washington State Arts Commission, we just finished a strategic plan for, um, for the next couple of years. So I'd like for us to see where, you know, where we align along some of those. So I know one specific thing we want to go for, but you know, I'm open to the others. So that's, and I would leave it to three questions. Jennifer. Yeah. So it seems like that what we're doing right now is we're trying to figure out what we want to do in 2023 and 2024 that have budget impacts. Well, also, <laughs> Also, or, or, or that I, we just want to do. I think we just want to do, and then we can decide like how to spread it out. Like we have an opportunity now with people back out. Oh, absolutely. Concert, right. But also I think like when we do something like, um, if we did something like the, the, uh, the groups, the serve, the interviews, the group interviews with cultural leaders and with that, that would be something that would be a little longer in sure manner, right but so it seems to me though that we kind of just need a table that has the work plan that aligns next to our budget some things will have a budget impact and some things won't exactly so for 2023 we want to solicit this feedback and then you know that could be almost a separate agenda item to determine how we want to do it the questions we want to ask the guidance we want to use exactly and, and then maybe in 2024 we make our goal to collaborate with the city and the marketing department for something that comes out of that survey. Yes, exactly. Um, that's great, Jennifer. And that's, that's, um, that is exactly what we're looking, we're looking for. But also I'd say that, that the survey that meeting with citizens and government and, uh, you know, business leaders should be maybe an annual thing. So we should put that along our budget as this year, you know, try to do some before the end of this year, and in 2023, and in 2024, because that's when you get, you know, collective knowledge, right? Are you um, taking, I, are you taking your excellent, to, sorry, are you taking, I'm sorry, I just wanted to ask, Jennifer, are you taking excellent notes that you'll share with me as you usually do? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can do that, and I can put this in a table and put it next to what I would think would be the budget impacts. Okay. I mean, that's Less, kind of what yeah. I do for groups is plan budget for strategic planning. So, and that's um, why we love you. So, yes, <laughs> thank you. You are, you are so that being cool. said, like, I think that trying to get a survey out by the end of August, oh the, no, I think I that's know. too aggressive. I agree, but I think if we if we maybe did a three person thing and at the at the um Tuesday night uh concert, it, it might be. I'm just talking about three questions, but maybe it might be too aggressive. We'll see. These are ideas. We're in the no bad idea phase, right? As they always say, which I always laugh because there's always terrible ideas. But anyway, <laughs> but if you could, if you could um, track all of this, Jennifer, I'd be appreciated. And then yeah, that's Colette, so Colette, did you want to say something? That we oh, actually, <clears throat> just regarding your suggestion, <clears throat> excuse me, that we do it on a on an annual basis. I like that idea. It would be that way we know that it's coming. And also we could time it so that when we get these fabulous ideas from the public, then it, we time it with our budget requests. So that if there is something that we want to help promote um, or that, that we can realistically get funding for, 
then that would that's all I was going to suggest is that it be timed that way. Um, so for, for 2023, we should we might need to do something <clears throat> this year. Yeah, yeah. And I think this is we'll see, you know, once we get to the end of this meeting today, we'll see what we've got. And then my hope is that um, we'll review next month when we meet that um, I'll, I'll get with Jennifer and we'll figure out, you know, um, and then Charlie too, because Charlie has the budget and, and let's actually try to do that in the August meeting. So we're ahead of the game and we can actually discuss, you know, discuss it before we have to put it in. <clears throat> but let's, let's remember as Josh just reminded us that the city is now on a two year budget cycle starting next year. So, um, we might want to do our survey every two years to coincide with the budget cycle. Josh, what do you think on that? <clears throat> Josh or Tiffany? Yeah, that's probably fine to do. Um, I, I guess I wasn't part of the last um, survey that we did before the arts and culture element, but I, I think um, the question that probably from the staff side and council side, maybe what the survey is going to be used for ultimately uh, because I know the last survey was used for developing the, the comp plan amendment, I think. Right. Um, so that was the, the value in, in that, but. Um, yeah, but uh, do you think, do you think we should do it every year? Which I'm fine with, but I'm thinking of the, of the two year budget cycle. Two years well, are I... probably fine. Um, for the budget, <laughs> just just kind of to clarify how the, how the budget works, in, we'll put specific things into the budget that we want to fund. Um, but it is not the end all of whatever we're going to spend money on. We have plenty of you know, freedom to spend money on different things if different things come up. Um, so it's good to kind of memorialize the things we want council to know about that we are planning on in the budget, yeah. but uh, we're not locked into it by any means. So if there's something right. that comes up that we wanna spend $5,000 to do, that's, we totally have the flexibility to do that, so. Okay, well, that, that's good to know. I always like to have ways to spend money. So that's yeah. <laughs> when, when the city adopts a budget, we adopt it the fund level, which means we basically say there is X amount of dollars in the city's general fund, and that is the extent of it. Um, we prepare an accompanying document that says this is how we expect to spend the money that's in that fund, um, but we are not locked into it. And in fact, council never actually approves that document. It's just for their reference. Um, so we have a lot of flexibility as we go along to either stay within that plan of how we plan to spend it or go off in different directions if that's what the need arises. Um, that's good to know. That's yeah. good to know. Okay, well, let's move on to public arts and community design because um, I think there's a few things to, you know, I think the good news is, is that, for instance, on a few projects, we have been called in. Um, most notably, I've watched the, the roundabout and the, the new sidewalk and go, oh, that's where our thing is going. So, um, you know, we're involved in some projects. I really um, would like to put under here, you saw me send Charlie's article that had a link to the new sports complex. And I think that being engaged in the sports complex is one thing that we should call out under here. Um, because, um, you know, public art purch purchases or resources, existing funding, you know, it just falls under the public art, public arts is the most, to me, the number one thing that's kind of uh, surfacing is that sports complex. And as you know, as many of you might remember, I sent around some mosaics that were done on Mercer Island um, as a mosaic project. And part of why I like this is I feel that as opposed to a, um, a mural, as you saw with the case of the mural for, uh, that got damaged originally when posted by, um, by the devoted Kiss Cafe and, and all of us on their building side, um, a mosaic you can clean if, if it's you know, hit with any sort of graffiti. Um, and also um, part of it is you can also incorporate as we did in Bellevue, um, kids mosaics into 
the mosaic itself. Um, there's a project that we did in Bellevue every year that kids did mosaic tiles. And then those tiles were all made into um, kind of a wall project. And, you know, there's different ways. I think also the Mercer Island mosaic had kids art incorporated into it as well from the community. So that gives us a chance to partner with a few different art organizations in the community as well that work with kids. Um, so that's my idea to kind of throw out there, but certainly open, you know, Lynn, if you think the, the Arbor Art goes under this one, um, anybody else have any thoughts around partnerships or um, ideas or even the 1% program for arts across the country, county for, um, for new builds? Although I don't know how much um, new building will continue to go on in the coming year or two. Um. Well, what came up for me was um, hands-on art, to, you know, as far as collaborating. Yeah, like, exactly. Like that, and having the kids do something through that program that then we uh, have a, a larger project to incorporate. Right. And you can incorporate the two together. We could also give, you know, funding for an art artist, but also as well, we could incorporate the kids artists. Well, could and could also work with uh, Laura Pettit's um, desire to have mural type projects. So maybe there's a whole big tie in there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Robin, from a planning point of view, would you say the sports complex would be a one year or a two year? I don't know the length of time we're looking at here for that project, but Yep. Charlie and Josh, can you... Yeah, construction for that will be next year, at least for phase 1B. And really, that's the only phase that we're going to be tackling in the, the foreseeable future. Um, and that's probably next year. I think that will be completed. And I'm assuming the public art installation, what, whatever that will be, will probably be next year as well. Okay, so the public art, if we did do something, or we will, with the sports complex, we'll need to get a call for artists out. Right. And have yes. a plan as to what we're looking for as well. Right. And 2023. 2023. Yeah. That should definitely be on your work plan. And and I know the engineering staff will be coming to talk to you specifically about that. Maybe okay. in the next couple of meetings. I'm not sure what their timeline is. Right. Yeah. And then I would also propose for both 2023 and 2024 that we get moving on that inventory of public art, because I know that that's something that's been on the work plan for years. So maybe in 2023, we can create like a request for proposals and have people submit ideas on how they would inventory and catalog the public art and select somebody to do it and right. move forward That's in 2024. Great. I yeah. love that. Yeah. So Josh, now the catalog, wasn't that put, wasn't that moved to um, LTAC funding? Yeah, that's out of tourism's budget out of LTAC, or it has been the last two years. Um, but tourism, of course, hasn't been fully staffed until just the last few months. So um, that probably will be on their work plan for 2023. And Laura can chime in on that. I see she's joined us. Right. But it, it seems to me that that's something that the Arts Commission should certainly be involved in. Yeah, yeah. That's probably one of those situations where staff will probably coordinate the process and then give you guys homework assignments to help us collect the information we need. Okay. Uh, yeah. Great, thank you. The other thing while we're on this that you'll wanna have on your work plan is the city, I'm not sure exactly what will be in the budget for 2023, 24, but we do need to do some master planning for our parks. Um, Crescent Creek Park, is that's getting underway here really soon. Um, there's Shaw Park, which is going to probably need a master plan. Um, I don't know that you guys will have an official role in that, but you should be collaborating in those projects so that you can you can give some input on on the artistic side of what those plans should include. So you right. could have something like that on your work plan. I don't Absolutely. I don't think any of those will have any capital projects in the next two years to to do anything, but you should be included in the planning process. Yeah. And that goes in under participate in the development of creative public spaces and all of yeah. that. So yeah, that's great. And then also one more before I know Laura joined us for specific reasons. So, um, but I think um, that um, under this, and of course it just, it just flew from my memory. So why don't we go to Laura and I'll write down when I remember it and we'll come back, so. I, 
and thank you all for having me. I love, I always love being a part of the Arts Commission's meetings. Um, a brief update on what I've been working on on a mural project. Um, Hillary Isaacson, who most of you are familiar with through her work um, and also from the Ukraine mural, um, has designed our past Christmas mural, which is um, savable and reinstallable each year on panels that are um, graffiti protected. Um, so we don't necessarily even need to hang it in the same place every year, although that would be nice. Um, we've explored the idea of doing different surprise and delight ideas throughout town that, um, you know, that focus on our sense of place, that give people an opportunity to inter interact. Um, one idea was to have the words Gig Harbor spelled out, missing the I, so people could stand there and be the I in Gig Harbor. Um, <laughs> something along those lines, um, it, something that, that harks to our history, but also our, our reasons for people to come take pictures. Um, so uh, we're exploring what the cost would be on that. Um, all of these would be, I think, uh, best best done through panels like that, which would be removable. Then that would be something the city would own, not necessarily something that the business owner would uh, be able to erase at, at a certain point. Um, we're exploring what the cost would be from that and what that would look like overall and what a schedule would look like for installing a surprise and delight mural throughout town over the course of a year. Um, I don't, I just heard back from Hillary yesterday on, on getting a proposal together. Um, I think we can utilize several different artists throughout this uh, instead of just one. And I, I, I support that idea for, a, you know, variation of, of perspectives on Gig Harbor. Um, I will have more information for you at the next meeting. Uh, I also just wanted to touch base on something I wasn't able to join, I'm sorry, uh, for the whole meeting, but I did hear just a bit on uh, distribution at uh, the Tuesday night concerts for, for something. And I would like to offer, we do, have, um, we do have a council engagement booth that we've put together for each Summer Sounds. Um, if there is material that, that could be distributed, uh, let me know, and perhaps that might be a venue. Um, I know there are two concerts where we have no one signed up to man the booth, so that may be an option, um, but I, I also want to just check with council first and make sure that they have first right of refusal on, the, on those spots. So that's a possibility to engage people in, in that manner. Um, I'm open to it. Uh, just Great. So Laura, uh, if they don't want, want either one of those spots, depending on what, it, what those two open spots are, I will volunteer to sit at the table and um, we could pull together something. And if anybody else can join me, that yeah, would be great. Charlie? Well, I would, yeah. And anybody else is welcome. Just think you get a guaranteed seat at the concert. So. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, I, <clears throat> that's great. So this mural project, how uh, you see it that you want to do this throughout the year. And um, is, that, is that what I'm hearing? Um, three or four times a year, or am I misunderstanding? I think we can have a new item drop maybe every every quarter. Um, so whether it be an installation for, I, I think that gives people something to search for. I think that gives some, you know, a, an opportunity to have new hashtags and new posts for people who are local, and then also just part of our general arts and discovery map throughout Cake Harbor. Um, and again, maybe it's maybe it's four different. We've got a, a Christmas mural that we can put up. Maybe it's something that we do, uh, you know. Uh, I'm not sure. That, I, I think we haven't. I think it's a great opportunity to have an interactive item in the winter when we have kind of crappy weather. Um, I think there's an opportunity in spring. I don't necessarily think it has to be seasonally themed. Um, but I think it would be for production and, and cost management. I think it would be an interesting idea to have maybe, maybe three things a year that we do throughout the next year. And then we reevaluate, we see what the impact is. We see how often and how far it's been spread and we go from there. Yeah. How Laura, are you, we can, how are, I'm sorry, Charlie, go ahead. Oh, Laura, we can, but you mentioned that you would be possibly exploring the idea of having other artists. Sure. Uh, participate and yep. we certainly can help you with a call for artists we're right we're pretty well connected with a lot of the um i would think we would want it to be a local artist yes um, i think that's a good idea yeah so um, certainly the, yeah. co the commission can help you 
um, with that call for art. And, and I would I would say too that you know maybe we we provide some direction and that we want something interactive. We want something that people can take a picture with. We want something that that while people have great ideas a lot of the time on their vision of Gig Harbor, we also want something that has maybe a phrase in one of these pieces or you know. Um, you know, there, there's some direction to it as well and not just an open call, but, um, you know, specifically I'm thinking of, uh, you know, the, the welcome to Austin mural, or I think I shared a couple with you last time, or, you know, there's a great one in Nashville that a few people have approached me about, um, you know, that we could do a version of, uh, I, I think we should probably create our own rather than copycatting another, but I do, I love the idea of a welcome to Gig Harbor mural at some point. Um, I think that's that can be related to our sense of place. I think a lot of people would use it for photos. Um, I think we can create something that's our own. And then really, maybe just some kind I like of the idea. I like the idea of being the eye in Gig Harbor with photo opportunities. I think people would really enjoy that and then post it and that would even be something that could go on the website, different pictures of people getting their photo taken there. I, I think that's a, a good idea. Hmm. And maybe we have just something that shows people that like step here because I'm sure we'd get a comment at some point like these idiots forgot the eye, you know. <laughs> so uh, yeah. you know, uh, maybe we just have a direction on that. I'm thinking also maybe that the I, I believe somebody made an initial inquiry into the wall on the side of Speedy Auto Glass, um, mm -hmm. and they were open to it as a. And I think we would probably do it on panels there. Um, but I also want to make great. sure that there's a safety component <laughs> in getting across that that crosswalk with the roundabout. Uh, so there's some other things to consider there. But but yes, um, I mean, I think what I, I would love to task this commission with is looking for spaces that they think might be good for a mural or or an interactive piece. Um, it doesn't necessarily even have to be a mural. Maybe it's a sculpture that people take pictures with. Um, you know, as far as cost, I'm, I don't have a proposal there yet, but I'm, I'm assuming it might be a, the same around the size of the Christmas mural. Um, I'm assuming it might take a total of maybe 3000 to 5000 to complete on those panels, um, for materials and time. Um, if we go for a larger space, I'm real, I'm uncertain there, but, um, but yeah, um, I also think it might be really, really interesting to have a youth component to this and to engage our high school audiences in perhaps taking a look at something that would be interesting to their age frame as well, because I don't know what's cool to high school anymore. I don't know what's cool to youth anymore. Uh, but having maybe their their arts groups take a look at, at creating something as maybe some part of their senior project or something along those lines that creates a great uh, partnership with PSD and also I mean, those kids are amazing. We have some, some amazing, like 2 million following uh, audiences with some of our kids here in Gig Harbor. They know what people react to and respond to. And I just think that's such a great audience to tap to. So maybe one of those um, we work with PSD on to identify a theme and identify a project and, and see what we can do there with our youth. Love that idea, Laura. Um, when when the call for artists go out to look for artists for these four murals, um, does something go out also to like the Puyallup tribe or um, to? Because I mean, I think that would be super cool to have like a welcome to Gig Harbor, but have it done in collaboration, especially yeah, with all uh, the steps that were taken at Austin Estuary or Austin yeah. Park. So we're, we're in touch right now with Jennifer Keating with the tribe um, and the tribe elders to, to put together that um, honoring ceremony. So maybe, and I'm thinking maybe maybe those are two separate pieces. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe that, that piece of art also identifies that, uh, you know, the destination and, and is somewhere near maybe Donkey Creek or where the initial establishment was. Um, I, would, I would almost say that there, there's an opportunity there to uh, talk to them about what their vision for art is, um, rather than to, to tell them what we see. Um, I, and I'll, I'm happy to have that conversation and see what the interest is there in an art installation, because that might be something specifically that, that they have a, an opinion on. Um, yeah. I know, obviously, we worked with Guy Kapoman on that, the honoring symbol. 
Um, so we have a great piece of art being installed there at the shoreline. Um, yeah. Um, I almost see that as two separate projects um, just because I, I wanna be respectful of tribal art and artists and, um, and kind of follow their guidelines as to, as to what they, they would like to do to honor that specific piece of land and their history. Um, yeah, and it doesn't even have to be with that particular project or land. I just think having them be part of murals, uh, really to reinforce the fact that we're not just honoring a group that is bygone, but it's a group that's still active in here. Right, and maybe maybe where the art and the Welcome to Gig Harbor thing incorporates uh, images from from the tribe as well as from our Scandinavian Croatian history and boat building history. Uh, and then maybe the person that we select for that has has an idea of how to integrate all of those things into, you know, into a mural. Um, well, that's that's why I think what Charlie's suggestion is in terms of the call for artists, mm -hmm. where we can really help you there and put a call for artists out, and then help. You know, um, I'd like to offer that. Of course, we'd love to you know have a representative from our committee, uh, from our group, be involved in in you know, assessing the artists yeah. as well. So, Absolutely. yeah, so I think, you know, that would, that would be great. Um, from a, from a tourism perspective and just as, as maybe part of that, that panel that, that interviews and reviews, um, I just want to make sure that there's an interactive component and that we've got, uh, you know, kind of a structured proposal and what we're, we're looking for in each uh, mural and then also figure out what the funding looks like, both maybe in collaboration with tourism and LTAC uh, dollars and Arts Commission funding. Um, I know, you know, we have our LTAC grants and you have Creative Endeavor grants. And um, I, I would love to just figure out how we, how a collaborative way to look at funding that. Uh, and I think that would be beneficial for both purposes. I agree. And I'm sure Charlie does too. I see her shaking her head. <laughs> Good idea. Great idea. And if I, I just want to interject because we're talking about tribal things. Just for informational purposes, um, I, on behalf of Gig Harbor Now, am working with the tribe um, in coordination with that, um, the blessing, installation and blessing of our fisherman, our guardian, Guy, Guy Kapoman's um, honor sculpture. Um, we are hoping to have a series of stories in the paper um, talking about the, the the history of the tribe in Gig Harbor, the Squabach band of the Puyallup tribe in Gig Harbor. And we are working to have those stories written by tribal members, one from an elder's perspective, one from a youth perspective, and one from uh, one or more um, from current perspectives. So we're, we at the paper are trying to give voice to the fact that <clears throat> We pioneers are sort of the invasive species <laughs> that there was a culture that was here many, many generations prior to the arrival of the pioneers. So, so there, there are a lot of things that are going on, tribal things. Yeah. That's great. And your, perf your timing was perfect, Laura, because this is exactly the goal we're under. So that's great. That's great. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you wanted to share with us? Um, I mean, you're more than welcome to stay with us as we go through this, because I think there might be, you know, coll other collaborations that might be possible. <clears throat> I see a hand from Jennifer and, a ha and, and Charlie too. Um, so I'll, I'll let them both speak before I, I weigh in. So Laura, I was just curious for um, the locations for these four murals. You mentioned a few private businesses and things like that. Is there a public, like announcement or way that businesses would be aware of that opportunity so they could submit. So um, in other words, you know, like I- That's a great question. Yeah, before the um, devoted KISS one went up, I had no idea that that could be a thing that businesses could volunteer for. Yeah, um, I think two things. I think uh, there might be a lot of, um, well, given that it's on a panel, it's an installation and not a permanent um, permanent install. Uh, Josh, I would really wanna check on city code for that and where murals are allowed and where they're not. Um, I think 
you know, I would love to work with this commission on identifying some places that could be a safe and be visible, um, you know, for some of these, and then maybe we can look at expanding it. Uh, there's also, I mean, the opportunity to, you know, privately commission a mural from a business uh, that maybe we don't, as a city arts and, and tourism commission, uh, need to be involved with. Um, so I, I would almost say this this would need to be a strategic placement if we've got only a few. Um, and I'd wanna make sure that we are following all code and, um, and just safety considerations too on access. Um, mm. So those are just some considerations that are rolling through my mind. Um, if you have others, uh, that would be great. Um, I'm not opposed to a public call for, for applications for um, locations, but I do think in our initial drop for these four, maybe we are a little bit more strategic on where, on visibility and on, on public safety. Uh, so, right, yeah. yeah, there's, there's so much beyond, beyond the surface to consider too. And I, I always try to make sure that we do our due diligence. So next month, um, when you meet, I'd love to have a, a little bit of a proposal on how it might look, what the cost might be. Um, and I'd love to hear from, from you all through the month too, if you have identified, if you can identify areas that you think would be appropriate for, for one of those four. Yeah. But my inclination would be to uh, like just approach the water downtown waterfront Alliance to see if any of their members <clears throat> would be interested in, uh, you know, would meet the, our criteria for a possible mur temporary mural placement. Um, and, uh, and and you know make the circle bigger more um, include the the waterfront alliance as well to sort of cross pollinate. Um, Laura, are you envisioning these as being downtown Gig Harbor um, or you know like west of the uh, of Highway 16 as well? You know, I think we have an opportunity to be inclusive of location and to drive people um, in different areas. I know one of the Two of my favorite little little art installations that people drive to and take pictures of in Austin are off the beaten path. One is off on the side of a coffee shop on South Congress, and the other is on the side of a boys and girls club in South South Austin. So wow. people drive specifically to the You're My Butter Half mural. It's a little bit out of the way, but it brings traffic into a different part of town. I don't think we want to be exclusive to other areas of town and just, okay. just make it a downtown project. Okay. Um, I think, you know, within city limits um, yeah, okay. is, is appropriate. Yeah. Um, and that stretches a pretty long way too. Right. Um, I think sometimes we ignore Gig Harbor North as a, a destination, um, but I, I think that that's, that's valid too. So right. yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. open. And I honestly, I would, love, I would love the input from this commission throughout the month. Shoot me an email. If you shoot me a photo, if you find a place where you're like, well, this looks like a great spot. That, this has easy access. This has visibility. People are going to be able to find it. Could drive traffic to local businesses. Um, those are all great considerations. Great, okay, great. Terrific, uh, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, Laura, I've been kind of on the lookout, right? And I've, it seems, aside from that, the huge wall that's now Harbor Hill Extension, which I don't think has had any graffiti on it yet, um, it, it, it doesn't seem to, there's sort of a lack of obvious mural, um, traditional mural spaces. I mean, that's why I think the, uh, the um, panels are a nice idea because you're not relying on a, you know, a, an existing wall that we can use. I think we have a lack of a smooth walls. It would be a good surface. So installing those panels is a great idea. And then if, if anything happens to that building, we can also move that and find a new location for it. So, you know, those are options. Yeah. So are you thinking about like a standardized set of panels? So they're all basically the same size, or are you talking about finding a location and then the panels will be adapted to a particular space? It's a really good question. I hadn't thought of that. Um, I think if we were going to do something on the side of, say, Speedy Autoglass, that's a pretty large scale one. I can think of maybe other 
building sides, like uh, within Uptown or something along those lines that might be appropriate for that. You know, I think we'd, we'd have to consider scale and where else it could be located, but I don't, I don't think that that necessarily limits us to keeping it in one place. Um, it would probably just be restricted to, to places where it fit, but um, you know, scale is always important in, in art. So, um, you know, for something like spelling out Gig Harbor, obviously that's going to have a, in human size letters, obviously that's going to have a, a need that's a little bit larger than, mm -hmm. than something that like the Peace and Joy mural, which fit well. And I do want to mention that that destination was chosen because that's the side of the artist studio. Uh, Devoted Kiss gave their okay, but it wasn't necessarily just that we self-selected a business. Uh, the artist offered the, the space. Um, so that's how that came to be. Um, is there any criteria as we're looking around as far as like the types of surfaces? Like, I don't know what it takes to mount these panels. No, I just wrote down criteria in my notes. <laughs> Develop criteria. Um, yeah. But I so, mean, like the actual, like, can it be on siding or concrete or? I think that's the benefit of the panels is that you don't need a soft, you don't need a flat surface or a smooth surface. You just need the ability to install and connect. Um, so that. You know, but that's something to consider. I, I, I have another question, Laura. Mm -hmm. Is there, would there be any interest or possibility? And um, I'm thinking of now that town and country has backed out of the rush development up by the post office and the Columbia Bank, um, there are a lot of empty windows there. Would those be a possible place for a mural? Uh, that would be, since they, they would likely be painting on the inside of the glass, uh, that would be something that would be temporary rather right. than anything. Yeah. Um, I think that might be different from this ask because it would be something that, that would not last in right. perpetuity. Um, but I mean, if they could be put inside the glass, you know, inside the window, I don't know, propped up or something. Sure. Yes. I'm just um, thinking of, I'm just thinking of how. Um, uninviting empty spaces with with empty windows are. Sure, um, I maybe that's an opportunity to engage our youth. Yeah, um, maybe I, I mean, for me, the spend it needs to to see a return that that is longer than un, undetermined, uh, yeah. because we don't know when another contract will be signed and we don't right. know when another um, occupant will be secured. Sure. Um, so. I'm hesitant on that, um, on a, on, on a spend, but I think that's a good idea. Um, although I, from a tourism perspective, I'm not sure I really want to have people drawn to empty businesses to take their photos in front of. <laughs> well, yeah, there's um, <laughs> okay. There's that. But, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's a, I think that's one canvas that we could, um, maybe, invite one of our nonprofits or maybe the Pencil Art League might be available to do something interesting in that space. Um, I don't know. I don't know if we can put funds toward that. Um, yeah, I get it. Yeah. From a tourism perspective anyway, from an arts perspective, perhaps, um, but, but yeah. Okay. Or maybe yeah. that's a creative endeavor for grant that, that happens and we have a group that's willing to paint the, uh, provide artwork for empty storefront windows uh, when available. So, um, you know, we offer a, a great blank canvas for some of those. Um, so that'd yeah. be a great annual ask to say, fund us, fund some, something for right. the year and we'll, we'll, we'll do materials and provide art you right. know, right. when, when materials and spaces are available. Yeah. So Colette. Oh, uh, I had a follow-up, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me. I had a follow-up question on the empty spaces. So, what would be the city's uh, ability to access? So like do a pop-up, do pop-ups in the, those spaces? Would we need to rent from, I mean, is there an existing owner? What is the status of the property? Because what I was thinking, what immediately came to my mind was to do a pop-up art gallery. Well, it's not, it's not public space. So it would need the private business owner to grant access. Mm -hmm. um, which we would need even to put the panels inside or to paint right. the windows. Right. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I, I mean, I think that would be a private business owner decision. Mm -hmm. um, well, and I like that idea. I wanted to add that um, if you remember Bella Home, which is near 42 or Bricks 25, um, and they have painted, I think it's actually film they put up in their windows now that they've gone out of business. But I wonder who owns that, if that's part of the, um, because I think the, um, because I think that space would make a nice pop-up gallery is mm -hmm. the reason I'm bringing that up. It's downtown. It's where people walk. Um, and I don't think that one's owned by Rush. I think it, and the people who are in the bottom are the uh, waterfront. waterfront lines. Yeah. So maybe they might know, but I think that'd be a lovely little space. I think that's a great idea for a pop-up gallery right there. Yeah. So I just thought I'd throw that out while we were talking about yeah. it. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay so um so i think that um in the in the interest of time let's move on to goal three education and engagement this discussion is great um we're generating a lot of wonderful ideas so education engagement we already you know we um I'm going to say goodbye to everyone here. Okay. I have another meeting to prep for, but thank you so much for having me. I will see you at the next meeting. And um, I appreciate your emails and suggestions throughout the month on possible destinations or further thoughts on criteria. Thanks, thank you. Laura. You, know, Thanks, and, uh, you can reach me at communications at gigharborwa.gov or lpettit at gigharborwa.gov anytime. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Laura. Have a good afternoon. You too. Ah, okay, education engagement, um, learning oriented arts and cultural environment. I think, you know, what we had under, we had done some uh, lectures under these in the past years, yeah. COVID. Um, Charlie, I think you still have a passion about maybe that, or maybe even trying to do uh, some sort of workshop. Winter workshops, I think would be a nice idea because then maybe we could do some uh, lodging funding, because if we did say a weekend art workshop, which I think this area is, is ripe for, um, I know we have the, uh, the, the writer's workshop that's already going, um, at Tacoma College, Tacoma Community College, but I think it would be nice to explore some sort of, um, arts workshop. I think we have a lot of resources in the community we can tap. We have a lot of great spaces between net sheds and um, and other uh, properties that I know the property that the mural was on next to Devoted Kiss, all of us. Um, I, I am very familiar with the owner of that building. Um, she's a good friend. And I held a workshop there and it was uh, several years ago, a lovely environment in the bottom. I know she would be engaged to do it again. There's the museum where we could hold workshops as well. Um, if that was to work into their plans at the Harbor History Museum, there's net sheds. So I think that I would like to put on the list a further discussion of some sort of uh, art workshop around that. Um, I don't have any more specific ideas. Please chime in um, with thoughts about that. Um, but I'd like to kind of get it on the list. Comments? Jen? Yeah, one thought. The second goal to foster the partnerships between uh -huh. us, the business community, and other organizations, it seems like that would be a really good goal to go in tandem with the soliciting feedback in 2023. Because then we can kind of get start building those relationships determine yes yes i like that and then i think you know out of that might grow the very last goal of create opportunities for the public to watch artists conservators and preservationists yeah i think that's a great one especially for you with the boat project right yeah um, <laughs> so we we have a built-in partner there right about our historic preservation so i i i i agree with that one as well um I also want to add under here, there is a program in Washington State of providing art from their collection, from the state collection, to schools that I don't believe that we've taken advantage of as Gig Harbor. And I would like to put that in there because there's a lot of works in the collection that could be part of the schools. There is also a program to commission art 
for schools from artists. So um, I think that that should be part of uh, some of these, of course, you know, you think, well, is that public art or not? There's a lot of overlap because they don't fit neatly into categories because um, it's pervasive. But I do think I'd like to see this one under there is to explore the State Arts Commission um, program of putting public putting art in our public schools. Um, and uh, so I think that would be a great one to add under there. Absolutely. So I think we have that, we have um, our existing, you know, programs. Um, there's a few other things, but I think that's like three or four, right? Yeah. Jennifer, for this one, you're yeah. for the And Charlie, did you have anything Yeah, I, I have it. I, I'm, go ahead, Jennifer, if you wanted to say something. I was just going to say that's three goals for the education one. Yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> um, this is just a suggestion that I'll throw out. Um, years ago, I, I um, observed and then wrote on um, a very interesting uh, and inspiring collaboration. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with the work of Christopher Mathy. He used to be a potter. Now he's a painter, lives in Southworth. He and a local musician, a woman who plays the guitar, got together and she just played something on her guitar, sort of ad-libbing, and Christopher painted while she was playing. And he was being inspired by what she was playing and she was being inspired by what he was painting. And it was a magical um, experience. And um, it worked because those two, have, they had done it before. Actually, I think one of them was done at the History Museum. Uh, and I think it might've been a fundraiser for the History Museum. This has been years and years and years ago, probably when um, Jennifer Kilmer was still the executive director there, Derek's wife. But um, it, it was a very engaging thing. So that might be another opportunity of, of music and art working together in creative collaboration. Um, I like that idea. I like that idea as part of a weekend retreat, that that yeah. would be the cocktail okay. hour um, yeah, really. or the coffee hour. But So let's, let's put that one down. Um, I'm going to move on to goal four unless anybody has anything else to add. Lynn? Two hands up. Lynn and yeah, Cole. I thought maybe this is a good time to bring up the official song of Gig Harbor, <laughs> Under a Gig Harbor Moon. <laughs> And I was ho I was hoping that Laura yeah. would stick around so I could bring it up. But this I, this I think goes under goal three, right? Um, I think is this the right place for to bring up once again the official song of Gig Harbor and how do we um, educate the public about that? And ideally at our summer concert series. <laughs> you know, I think that's a good goal for the next summer, next year's summer concert. Yeah. Let's get it on there. We keep, yeah, I actually kind of forgot about it for a while. We yeah, somebody's got to play that thing. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but, but, like, I think this this year it is the time to. I mean, I don't. I doubt Laura has is is really aware of it, maybe, or hasn't been there. We had, we we sort of made a formal. Um, request of the last marketing director, uh, Karen, um, about you know, how to incorporate this. And then it all just disappeared. So, um, well, so let's put it on for next year's planning. Put it on this year's list because they can't get it in this year. No, they can't get it in this year. But planting a seed with our marketing department, uh, with Laura. Yeah, the best yeah. way to do that, I think, is to put it on our goals list. Yeah, I yeah. think it's great. Right. Okay. I didn't even yeah. know there was an official I know. I know. Nobody does. We've we known about it for a few years, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and remember that um, a couple years ago, we um, kind of rubbed noses with the Gig Harbor Band Boosters. Yeah. yeah. And they were, they were going to perform. Yes. And I mean, so we can still pursue that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think COVID got in the way of that one. Right? I think so. Right, but right. Co Colette and I attended their 
final concert as arts commissioners. Uh -huh. And it was wonderful. And I'm, I have a feeling that they would get a big kick out of incorporating that into their final concert. I love it. Yeah. So Colette, you had your hand up? I did. I just wanted to point out, Robin, under the um, the advocate, excuse me, advocate the inclusion of arts in the STEM programming. That's already happening. Um, the a couple of schools have reached out to Peninsula Art League, and last just this past couple of months, we had one artist in particular. He used to be a, a teacher. Um, go to their STEM programming night and um, was demonstrating portrait drawing and the kids loved it. They absolutely, they had a great time. I had one of the teachers reach out to me just to, to say how much they enjoyed that. So that's something that we could, you know, that PAL could as an organization um, encourage more and perhaps um, engage more artists. I love that. And let's put it on the list because part of this is also partnering and supporting the community when we can, mm -hmm. right? Um, so let's put that on. And I, I, last meeting I said I had to renew my membership and I will this weekend at the, <laughs> the fair, but I'd love to be involved with that, Colette. If, oh, that'd be great. That would be great. Also, I wanted to thank you for passing on the the state arts commission a grant that covid relief grant that's oh yeah charlie and i both were of the same mind we both saw it and yeah thought of you so <laughs> okay great so let's move on to spaces and places um i have two to go under here one is um i mean this is a long-standing need um i forget the uh the planning director's name who was at our last meeting, um, but uh, I'd have to look it up, but we mentioned the Masonic Hall and he said there's something planning going on around that or something. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to put in, you know, engagement in the Masonic Hall. Josh just popped back on. Fill us in, Josh. <laughs> yeah, the Masonic Hall, that, that was Matt Gior, Parks Manager. Thank you. Your last meeting. The Masonic Hall will be part of the Crescent Creek Master Plan, that whole park system there. So um, it, you can put that specifically on your list, but it will be included probably in the whole master planning part for the entire park. So, well, great. I want to do that, probably works. Yeah, since this is called Spaces and Places, this goal, um, let's put it under there for now. Um, but yeah, I think that that's a conversation that the arts community needs to be engaged in. And, and so let's get it on there. Um, and the other one is uh, Matt, he also mentioned, Matt also mentioned, uh, I don't know what it's called, Josh. What's the new, the remodeled boathouse? next to the roundabout um, that they want to use as a venue for events and oh the the brick house at the boat shop the brick house the gig harbor boat shop the eddie house. The yeah eddie, eddie house it's called the eddie house eden eden? isn't that eden. Eden. the eden brick house i yeah, think eden. that needs to be on here um that, that one so the Edinburgh House, that probably shouldn't be on your list because the Edinburgh House is leased to the Gig Harbor Boat Shop and they are responsible for all events and coordinating all of the rentals. So they will charge okay. the fee and collect the fee. It's, it's been leased to them. So the city really doesn't have a role in how that's used. Okay. Uh, we'll be talking to them a little bit about, about their use of it, but it's really it's really their, their jurisdiction at this point. So uh, that may change. And if that changes, I'll let you guys know, but- um, Okay. All right, yeah, part, I, we're kind of out of that that part. Okay, um, so, as places and places, I'd also like to put on here. We're looking for maker spaces and rehearsal spaces, and boy, I don't know what's going. You know, I know town and country's pulled out, but certainly, is there opportunity to look at creating some maker spaces in that complex? Um, so I just want to throw that out. Jennifer, you have your hand up. Yeah, so it sounds like to me, maybe next year we do an inventory and we can identify these spaces and who owns it, who manages it. And then from there, we can identify which ones might be possibilities for us to 
pursue involvement That's with. A great idea, Jennifer. Yeah, let's put that down. But I'd also like to keep the Masonic Lodge separate as a specific okay. interest for us, because I think that we've been involved in a lot of discussions. Peninsula Art League has been involved in discussions years ago. I don't know, Colette, if you're still involved in that. Um, but I think everybody feels for the longest time that has opportunity there. So let's keep that separate, but also inventory other spaces. That's a great idea, Jennifer. I agree, Jennifer, that's a great, a great idea. You know, it then ties into the tourism aspect as well. You hate to see empty storefronts. Yeah. And I know that Seattle has just put a push on um, and uh, put a call out for ideas on how to use these spaces, even on a temporary basis. So they're leasing them out or actually giving grants and, and I'm not quite sure how, how they've structured that. But um, so, uh, cause I'm involved with the pop-up gallery there uh, in Seattle on First Avenue. And it's a wonderful thing then because when tourists are walking by it is not a forlorn looking empty shop. And, so many of them closed down during COVID. I don't know that we have a lot of that in Gig Harbor, um, but inventory in those spaces would be a good way of, of identifying them and find out where there's a need and where we could fill it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's great. Um, okay, cultural and heritage. So, um, I think a few things fall under this, but, uh, I actually think the poster project that we were talking about with Laura could fall under this. What do you think? The murals, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Right, especially if, if um, at least one of them had a sort of historic um, theme. Yeah. Um, and well, all of them have understanding and celebrating other cultures. Right, and yeah partnerships with sites. Um, I'd also like to um, mention, and Josh, I didn't want to call Laura out, you know, in front of everybody, but I, I, and it's not a bad thing, it's just very natural to call it the Christmas mural, but if we could call it the holiday mural, I would really appreciate that, um, because there are, uh, we have a diverse community, and, uh, I think holiday is more important to say than Christmas, especially with the with the whole nativity scene thing that happened a few years ago. <laughs> um, yeah, so I wanted to share that with the art the, the committee just because it's part of what we do is just kind of advocating for those things. But um, but I think it's important in any documentation that we call it the holiday mural. Um, but um, so I think the mural project that we're talking about with Laura could definitely fall under here. Um, and um, Charlie, you have any other thoughts about this? You're really- uh... I, Actually, actually I do. Um, and I'm not, it can go here, I think, as well as the um, um, artistic experiences goal. Um, few people know, but it's true that one of the original uh, responsibilities of the Arts Commission was the banners that hang on the lampposts all through downtown Gig Harbor. Um, and those have since kind of been taken over by the Downtown Waterfront Alliance, but those originally were the responsibility of the Arts Commission. Uh, and I think it might be an opportunity to collaborate with the Downtown Waterfront Alliance in those banners. And certainly it would be an opportunity for children's art, for example, for um, cultural um, art on those banners, some kind of a, I don't know, Native American theme or a Croatian fisherman theme, or um, I think there are many thematic possibilities. Um, but I think those little banners could be a really good um, tourism draw and um, also another way that we can, uh, you know, bring arts and cultural experiences to our citizens and our visitors. And I know that during the summer, they're replaced by beautiful flower baskets. 
and in the winter time they're replaced by wreaths but um the rest of the year they're they're just banners so um i i would like for us to maybe put those on our list that's great and i'm happy to be uh, the liaison with the downtown waterfront alliance if we decide to go if we decide to put those on our list that's great hey um Charlie, I feel, oh, I feel like years ago we talked about those banners um, and one of the ideas was um, what if they were each individual canvases, right? So it's pre preformed canvas and um, each one's individually painted, mm -hmm. like whatever. It could be, it could just be another fun um not a competition, but just another fun project that engages several different people of all ages, and maybe there's a theme. Um, I, I don't, I don't really know how that would be organized, but that just occurred to me. I think when we were t we were talking about instead of printing multiples of of one design, maybe each each of those banners is its own canvas. I love that. That's kind of a treasure hunt then. See if you can find the, um, the 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 orca, or see if you can find the um, the salmon, or um, whatever. That's a beautiful idea. I'm assuming it would have to be after it was painted, though, it would have to be put on a banner, because otherwise, how do you protect it from the elements? Well, they, Maybe they I'm don't. not following. Following, I think is a great idea. I'm just wondering how it would be implemented. Well, I think if the whole thing itself is a piece of canvas, the banner itself is a piece of canvas that plot that fits right onto those posts, and it could be they could be varnished or you know, and they're I don't know how long they would stay up, right? It, it yeah. would probably be a limited yeah. engagement, some limited like it'd be like an art uh, an art show. Right. It could be a quarterly thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's great. Okay, anything else for cultural Sonia, so, Sonia, did you have something? No, no, I, it sounds like a good idea. Okay, Lynn, do we wanna put Harbor Arbor Art, Harbor, Harbor, yes. whatever. Do we wanna yes. put that somewhere? Do we wanna put it under spaces and places? Um, or you want to take a break? You... Um, I guess I felt like it went under gold too. Is it fl places and spaces? I was thinking of um, more like the venues you're talking about. Okay. Um, so, okay. Yeah, I think so. Did we put it under there? Uh, we discussed that at goal number two. Un okay. I just wanted but... to make sure. Okay. Um, um, okay. So unless anybody else has anything to add, this has been quite the brainstorm. So this, this is great. Um, Jennifer, I was wondering if maybe between now and the next meeting, you would get be willing to get together with Charlie and I so we can organize this in some matter to bring it back for a, a review for everybody in August and also addition, any additional feedback or comments. Yeah, of course. Yep. Do that. Okay, great. So I'll just email you and uh, you know Charlie and separately, and we'll we'll arrange some time, either Zoom or in person, um, depending on how everybody feels at that moment um, to get together. Okay, okay. that's great. Thank and you. And if you give me a couple of weeks, I'll have it ready in a spreadsheet. Oh, you're wonderful. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Um, I think I'm done with that. So I don't know what's Tiffany, what else we got coming up there? I, th I think you covered everything. Commissioner comments. I think, are we down to commissioner comments? Let's see. Yes, we are. Okay. Um, I'm gonna jump in on commissioner comments because I am, um, I want to invite all of you to attend, as you know, this weekend is the 36th <laughs> Summer Art Festival sponsored by Peninsula Art League. 
This is the return of the arts festival after two years of COVID induced hiatus. Um, and I'm hoping to see, I know some of us are going to be volunteering down there, um, but I hope that everyone will pay a visit to downtown Judson Street, um, admire the art, acquire the art, and also be sure to stop by the um, show of the Gig Harbor, um, and the Peninsula Art League's member show, which will be happening at Timberland Bank right there on Judson Street. And we will be having an awards reception with food um, Saturday evening, starting at five o'clock and food and wine. And um, the juror will be looking at all the paintings and uh, other submissions and awarding her ribbons. Um, and that'll be a fun thing. And um, so we want you to be sure to stop by the reception. I have printed invitations for you all, but I realized that I had no way of getting them to you uh, other than mailing them to your house. And I got too late to do that. So consider this a written and verbal invitation to please attend the reception, which happens Saturday at five. Any other comments, commissioner comments? Lynn. Uh I, I'm embarrassed I have never caught this, but on the agenda, can you see on the agenda? Oh, I've blurred myself. Um, the word commissioner is spelled wrong in commissioner reports. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Lynn, you're not up to your usual standard. Uh, uh, you know, and I went wrong. back and I noticed it's on past agendas too. It's been there probably for a while. You know, it just keeps getting carried over. Anyway. This is a test. This go. was a test. <laughs> Uh, that's oh, my only comment. Look at that. Yeah. Um, well, that was a very valid comment <laughs> from one of our yeah, commissioners. Yeah. Uh, any other commissioners' reports or comments? Has anyone seen a, a, an art show or had an artistic experience that was very moving or inspiring to you that you want to share that we should go see? I did. I had, um, I was back east for my. Uh, business partners uh, summit conference at Stone Barn Center in outside of New York City. And aside from that being wonderful, we took a drive, Mark, my husband and I up to um, up to Frederick Church's house called Olala. Um, and, um, and it was an hour and a half up and it was absolutely spectacular. It's preserved um, and um, it's uh, preserved in time, but he also considered himself, as he got older and couldn't paint, a landscape artist. So it's on the Hudson River, it's absolutely gorgeous. It was very inspiring, made me wanna take out my watercolors and start painting again. <laughs> great, great. Any others? Well, actually, um, not Olala, Olana. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I was oh, looking well. at Charlie and said Olala, oh, although Olana, and it's it's quite beautiful. Good, good. Um, any others? Colette, well, you look very calm for having um, a big event this weekend. Oh well, that's because I have uh, everybody else doing all the work. <laughs> 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 Not by design. It's just simply um, there is a committee that's dedicated to the festival and um, everybody seems to know what they're supposed to do and when they're supposed to do it. There's been a couple of glitches and late things happening and, you know, store owners saying, what? We didn't know about this or, you know, those little things and artists, artists saying, can we unload in front of the bank during business hour? You know, but um, so other than hearing about those little things, it seems to be going really well. Um, there was a lot of hair pulling before, I think. And there probably will be all weekend, but <laughs> fingers crossed. It's yeah, going to go. It's going to go. It'll well. be just fine. Everybody will get settled in and the artists will make a lot of money and guests will be wonderfully happy and acquire new art and make new friends and after it's done we're going to say we're never going to do that again 
And then five minutes later, we'll say, oh, but it was such fun. We're going to do it again next year. Of course, we're going to do it again. So <laughs> yeah, the latest is I just heard the banner is not even up anymore. So that was even, oh. that was less than a week that it the was, banner was up. It was just a week. Yeah, that was a surprise. It wasn't In the even past, <laughs> it's always been two weeks. In the past, it's been two weeks. And suddenly, it's just one week. When did we, we find that out? Uh, we found it out yesterday when I drove through town and the banner wasn't up. Huh. Who's, whose call is that? Is that a city? That, who does that? Who? Well, the city does it. The city we, and um, Jenny Wook is, you know, she coordinates with the city to put it up and uh, make sure it's put up. And uh, neither Jenny nor I nor anyone realized that the time frame had been shortened to one week instead oh. of two. Oh, yeah. So yeah. when we scheduled it, we scheduled it. We thought we were scheduling it for um, last week and this week, and hmm. real and found out today that no, it was just for last week. So had we known that, we would have scheduled it for this week instead. But we didn't know. So did they did they replace it with another banner? Um. Yeah, yeah. Whoever has this week is entitled to this week and they're there so who is it um i forget i just know i know it wasn't peninsula Art league that's all so charlie what i just since i have you here do did the invitations go out to the council yep okay good. i hand delivered them and also at monday night's council meeting i gave a, a verbal invitation and a reminder that this is the festival and so normally, if the meetings are in person, I would hand deliver to each council member and the mayor and the department heads in person. But because it was uh, a virtual meeting, I just delivered all the invitations to the city and asked them to be distributed appropriately. And then at the council meeting during public comment, I reminded everyone and invited uh, council members and um, um, our department heads. Josh, did you get yours? Did you get your invitation? I don't think I've seen one. Well, it should be in your inbox, wherever your inbox or on your desk. Oh, yeah, it'll probably make its way to me eventually. Somewhere. It's in a red envelope. You can't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> well, ask about it. I put them on the um, the desk upstairs, the reception desk upstairs. Oh, OK. And there wasn't anyone there, but I put a little note. Please distribute these. Ah. I'll, I can track it down, I'm sure. Yeah, thanks. Good thing I checked. No pressure, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> and you said it's at Judson Bank, is that right? Judson Heritage. City. Heritage. 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 Okay. Heritage. On Judson. Yeah. Okay, okay. Lucano. Okay. Timberland. Timberland Bank. I'm sorry, I said the wrong bank. Oh, it is Timberland. Timberland. Okay. It's Timberland, yeah. And there's a shuttle, there's a free shuttle that um, that's a very important thing to know about. Uh, the shuttle goes from the, um, the Franciscan Medical Center parking lot up on Kimball, right across from the Pierce County Park and Ride. Um, and the shuttle goes about every 10 or 15 minutes right downtown to Judson Street. And it's gonna be way easier to take the shuttle than to try to find parking. That's for sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> so ride the shuttle, um, buy stuff, and come to the reception. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, the the art show at the um, at Timberland Bank is a nice little respite too, um, for when you know you're uh, you want to come inside, and uh, because all the it, it's all the um, it's like an art gallery. It's going to be set up like an art gallery, and uh, and you can walk through and look at that art as and that will be for sale as well. So it's kind of an and yeah. good opportunity for artists that belong to Peninsula Art League to show their pieces. Right. Yeah. And at the uh, awards reception, did I mention that there will be food and wine? That's, right. <laughs> That's what got my attention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Yes, okay. I collaborated with uh, our treasurer, Ketty, um, since she's quite the on file. I always say that wrong, but uh, 
Yeah, we should have good wine. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, Lynn, anything? Yeah, please. Uh, just, um, could you refresh me about the honoring symbol in Austin Park? I'm, I'm just afraid I'm gonna miss the, miss it. Um, what's, what's the status? I feel like we talked about it last month, but I couldn't remember when are we expecting this, that art to be installed? Uh, specific date is unknown at this point. Josh, have you heard anything? Uh, August sometime. I have not heard the exact date yet, but that's August. kind of what we're moving forward towards at this point. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, tenat so, tentatively yeah. August. We will be Hopefully. sure to let you know when we find out. Oh, okay, because our next meeting is August 10th, so I just... Yeah. Would, um, and, and you can cool. watch Gig Harbor now because we'll be previewing it. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, uh, anything else? Uh, seeing no other business, it's um, about uh, seven minutes till noon. This has been a wonderful meeting. What good, rich ideas we shared with, with each other. Thank you all so much. And um, other than that, may I have a motion to, oh, next regular meeting is August 10th. Uh, and may I have a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll uh, second it. All right. We have motion and second. And um, all, in, all, all are in favor. Aye. So we are adjourned. I'll see you Saturday at the reception. Uh, and then I'll see you again next month on the 10th. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. Bye. Enjoy your day. Thank you, Josh.